To me, the most overlooked portion of these factory service manuals is right there on the cover page for every steam and diesel locomotive, and that's the operational specifications. What is specified is the amperage at which these trains should be running. A high amperage could produce things that are non-desirable for the train, especially over time, including elevated heat and maybe even voltage reduction. Uh, elevated heat, for example, could damage plastic, it could uh, impact wire insulation, including the motors. Uh, the armature has, has already got the reputation of an inability to disperse heat, and it might just simply cause it to even build up greater heat. It can impact lubrication, uh, and it could lead to a degradation in motor performance. Those are just some I'm going to show the resources before we run the test of what I dedicate to performing these tests on these locomotives. And it is including the trackage. Here you see 12 pieces of curve track. Each is dedicated to testing. I keep them in plastic boxes. I clean them before and after every test and they're built to my specifications. I hand select these uh, pieces of track to make sure that their rail head is extremely smooth and clean. I also clean all pins, polish and shine those, and I also clean the receptacles with mineral spirits. I bend each pin about 20 degrees in the same direction to give better uh, connection to the adjacent piece of track. Now in this test with 140 inches, that's gonna require these 12 curves, but it also requires two straight. Now I'm gonna substitute for the straight track two different sections. One is going to be a re-railer and the other one is going to be half, you might say, of a 90 degree crossing. I'm going to substitute one piece of curve track for the curve section of this switch, this manual switch. These three items, the re-railer, the, the switch, and the 90 degree crossing, I also maintain in this dedicated box or location just for testing. All of my rails will be mounted on, are mounted on rubber road bed. I do that to ensure the best possible uh, position for the track, including any slippage, eliminating any slippage along the way or reducing it at least. Now, if you'll look in the description below, you're going to see instructions as to how to see a video. And I wanted to point out to that video to make sure that the person who posted it gets proper credit. You'll actually see a video of a test track in use at the AC Gilbert factory. If you look closely, you'll see on that test track special sections of track. Uh, and you'll see things that are track accessories like uh, uncouplers. Well, I'm not going to put any uncouplers on this one, but I am going to put some special sections of track. I'm unsure that they did that for purposes of testing the power distribution or they did it to make sure that each locomotive uh, can negotiate all the different types of track without any problem. But nevertheless, in order to emulate what AC Gilbert did, I'm going to use a re-railer for one section of straight, uh, another section of straight, I'm going to substitute to 90 degree crossing, and for one section of curve, the curve part of this switch. I also dedicate for the test a 2B transformer. Now I disassembled this transformer, I thoroughly cleaned it and rebuilt it, all electrical connections, I put in new wiring, uh, everything on it, uh, so that it would possibly be in the best possible condition and not overused. Uh, other things I'm going to... And perhaps the most important device that I'll use is the ammeter. For this one, I'm going to use a model SF60, and it'll be connected to the track with 16 gauge wire to ensure a good voltage flow. Now it'll be connected with spade clips, again, to ensure a good connection to the transformer. So power, uh, will, this will be applied to the uh, transformer at the power feed, and it will run from the power feed through the meter down to the track. Nothing in between. It has to be the ammeter between the transformer and the track. And then the base post 
and I am using a dedicated track clip that I don't use for any other purposes. It's very clean. It's clean before and after each use, and it'll be connected to the base post on the transformer again with another spade clip to ensure good connectivity. So nothing in between the power source and the rail head. With the exception of the locomotive and the four box cars that'll be used as the contest, everything is set up and ready to go on the test track. Please take note of the location of the 90 degree crossing, substituting for one of the straight sections in the 140 inch oval and the uh, <clears throat> switch substituting for one of the curved sections and the re-railer substituting for another. Keep in mind that when you see AC Gilbert's test track, you might see more accessories. For example, a uncoupler. I choose to mount the camera on the floor uh, pointed toward the amateur so that I can go back and review it uh, after the test and take a closer look at it uh, rather than trying to observe it while the train is actually running. I'd rather look at the uh, video itself. And note that the amateur is in direct line of the power current that's coming from the transformer. Nothing to interfere with it, nothing in between, and then the base connection comes off of the track clip back directly to the base on the 2B transformer. The test track is now configured to run the test, the amperage test, on 350. It'll require 9 RPMs. I think the measure of success is 1.75 amps drawn after 9 RPMs. So it looks like after about nine, exactly 9 RPMs, the tenth one coming up, we're drawing about 1.75 amps, maybe just shy of that. 